Hurricanes have always amazed me. It's a naturally formed occurrence or event in which extremely powerful winds, thunderstorms, and overall destruction reminds us that humans, as intelligent as we are, can plan for anything and everything except for what Mother Nature has in store. The sad reality is hurricanes tend to kill people year after year. And although some hurricanes are more powerful and much more deadly than others, at the end of the day, everyone's situation is different. Some don't have the means to get out of state in time or find a place where they could afford to stay. Others tend to think they could deal with the storm head on, refusing to leave their property. Regardless of how or why things play out the way they do, one thing is certain, hurricanes are here to stay. So rather than hate them, I've learned to love them, try to understand them, and get as much information about them as possible. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're counting down the top 10 strongest hurricanes in history. What's going on guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host for this one, Jared Bronstein. And we are once again talking hurricanes, which I really don't mind. They're sick, bro. As always, stick around at the end of this one for some comment replies, but for now, let's get right into it. All right, before we start counting off some destructive hurricanes here, let me quickly break down what the difference is between a hurricane, typhoon, and a cyclone. Aside from location, Nothing. It really is as simple as that. You see, this weather event, as we can call it, is defined as a tropical storm reaching sustained winds of over 74 miles per hour, as per the Saphir Simpson hurricane scale. But again, just because it's on the hurricane scale, as it's called, doesn't mean this rule only applies to hurricanes. Any tropical storm exceeding 74 miles per hour is considered a hurricane, typhoon, or a cyclone. It really does just depend where the storm takes place. Hurricanes occur in Western Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, while cyclones happen in the Indian Ocean and South Pacific. Typhoons occur in the Western Pacific, but considering how this is a list of the 10 strongest hurricanes in history, to no surprise, we're going to be focusing on tropical storms surpassing 74 miles per hour located in the Western Atlantic and Eastern Pacific. And the strongest is an interesting term, because that could mean strongest winds or possibly the ones that cause the most damage. For the sake of this video, we'll be focusing simply on the strongest winds, but let us know if you guys would be interested in a list of the costliest hurricanes as well. All right, now that we got all that sorted, let's kick this list off. Starting us off at number 10, Hurricane Rita. The 2005 Atlantic hurricane season was one of the worst in history, as we had three of the top 10 most intense hurricanes in the Atlantic ever recorded. To no surprise, Rita was a part of those three, which also includes another hurricane on this list and the infamous Katrina. Going back to Rita, this hurricane at one point had had sustained winds of 180 miles per hour, but would drop down to a category three hurricane with winds of about 115 miles per hour before making landfall. Rita would make its way through the Bahamas, Cuba, Florida, Louisiana, and Texas, but surrounding states also felt the impacts. Considering how this storm came not too long after Katrina, things were much tougher on those affected than they normally would have been. And although Katrina was one of the most destructive and costliest hurricanes of all time, it didn't make this list because technically it never surpassed winds of 175 miles per hour. And although that is a category five, every other hurricane on our list reached a minimum of 180. On to number 9, Hurricane Irma. The first Cat 5 hurricane of the 2017 season, Irma reached peak winds of 180 miles per hour and lasted just about two weeks, causing numerous fatalities both directly and indirectly, as well as approximately $77 billion in damages. This hurricane affected a lot of the islands, such as Cape Verde, Leeward Islands, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Turks and Caicos, Jamaica, the Bahamas, and a lot of the East Coast United States. To no surprise, Florida was hit incredibly hard as the storm storm seemed to continue gaining strength as it made its way up to the warmer waters into the Sunshine State. Of the approximate $77 billion of damage, about $50 billion was done to Florida alone. They also faced the most casualties, claiming 84 of the total 134 deaths attributed to Irma. At 8, Hurricane Mitch. Lasting from October 22nd until November 9th, 1998, Hurricane Mitch is the second deadliest Atlantic hurricane on record. Reaching 180 miles per hour at one point, the storm would end up costing approximately $6 billion in damages, affecting Honduras, Nicaragua, South Florida, Jamaica, Ireland, and the UK. However, the death toll, which to this day is still estimated to be higher than the confirmed total, is 11,374. The two Central American countries in Honduras and Nicaragua were affected the most with historic amounts of rainfall causing fatal flooding and mud Slides. Honduras estimated a total of 7,000 fatalities, while the latter is believed to have suffered closer to 3,800. The aftermath of the storm also left an additional 2.7 million people without homes, and the name Mitch for hurricanes was officially retired. Coming into 7, Hurricane Linda. The damages of Linda only cost 3.2 million, which yes, is still a significant amount of money, but when we're talking hurricanes, anything under 10 million is a miracle. There also wasn't a single fatality attributed to the storm, which ran from September 9th, 1997 until September 21st, 97. Socorro Island, Southwest Mexico, and Southern California were affected, but thankfully Linda didn't make landfall as it just skimmed the affected areas. Still, Socorro Island was affected, leading to damaged meteorological instruments, and Mexico had to close five of their ports due to the large waves and storm surge. California was fearing if Linda made landfall, it would have been as devastating as the 1939 storm, which only had 120 miles an hour winds, but would end up costing the state 2 million in damages. 
That was back in 1939, so as you can imagine, if it were to happen in 97, things would have been much more dangerous and costly. Thankfully, that wasn't the case, and hopefully California won't deal with another scare like this anytime soon, as they likely would know how to handle a hurricane the way us East Coasters do. Coming into number six, Hurricane Dorian. One of the most recent ones on our list, Dorian lasted from August 24th, 2019 until September 10th, 2019. One of the most intense storms to hit the Bahamas, Dorian also reached sustained winds of 185 miles per hour, but the damage was as significant as could be. Although it seems the Bahamas certainly got the worst of it, Dorian would still go on to affect Puerto Rico as well as eastern United States and Canada. It would cost around $5 billion in damages, 84 fatalities, and thousands would be without a home. As of April 2020, there were still 245 people missing from the storm, so the death toll is potentially higher than the confirmed 84 fatalities. Dorian also beat Irma, being one of the strongest hurricanes to reach landfall, alongside the Labor Day hurricane, coming in at 185 miles per hour. And to no surprise, that Labor Day hurricane is on this list a little later on, but for now, let's move on to number five. Halfway at five, Hurricane Wilma. Along with Hurricane Rita and Katrina, Wilma was a part of the record-breaking 2005 Atlantic hurricane season, which included three of the 10 most intense Atlantic hurricanes ever as I said before. 2005 was a rough year to say the least. Wilma became a category 5 hurricane within 24 hours of officially becoming strong enough to be a hurricane on October 18th. With the storm starting out on October 15th, many weren't expecting it to gain the strength that it did, affecting Jamaica, Cuba, Cayman Islands, as well as parts of Central America such as Honduras, Southeast Mexico, and the East Coast of the United States, mainly South Florida. The Bahamas and Bermuda also felt the effects of this one and in total, it led to 52 fatalities and 22.4 billion in damages. Although its intensity would seem to drop, it would resurge, making landfall several times and causing a ton of destruction to anything in its way. Moving on to four, Hurricane Gilbert. This 11 day storm from September 8, 1988 until September 19th in 88 also reached sustained winds of 185 miles per hour. This storm would also reach landfall a few times and although its intensity dropped, it would still cause $2.98 billion in damages and claim the lives of approximately 318 people. The Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico were hit the hardest. For nine of the 11 days, this storm was active. This storm hit a lot of the southern states and countries, including Puerto Rico, Venezuela, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Central America, Mexico, Texas, parts of South Central and Midwestern United States, and Western Canada. The pressure from this storm was actually quite low, unlike a lot of the others on this list, which were quite high. But that's why I'm basing this list off of wind speeds. Following the damages this hurricane caused, the name Gilbert was retired and replaced with Gordon in the spring of 1989. Bringing us to number three, the 1935 Florida Keys Labor Day hurricane. They didn't start naming storms until the year 1953, so anything prior is usually titled with the year of the storm and an event that happened. To no surprise, the 1935 Florida Keys Labor Day hurricane happened in the year 1935, affecting mostly Florida, or the Florida Keys, and it happened on Labor Day weekend. This storm lasted from August 29th until September 10th, and given when it occurred, unfortunately there isn't a ton of information on it, and what we do know is still somewhat speculation. Still, this storm is believed to have reached sustained winds of 185 miles per hour, causing 423 fatalities and $100 million in damages. This was back in 1935, so $100 million was a lot more than it is today. The storm itself hit the Bahamas, obviously Florida Keys, as well as Southwest and North Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, and New England. Storm surges of 18 to 20 feet led to the Florida Keys getting hit significantly harder than some of the other affected areas, and this is considered one of the most intense Atlantic hurricanes of all time. Now at number two, Hurricane Allen. Forming on July 31st, 1980, before dissipating on August 11th, Allen is the only hurricane in the history of the Atlantic Basin to reach sustained winds of 190 miles per hour. This made it the strongest hurricane by wind speed ever until the number one slot took over. We'll get back to that hurricane in a little bit, but Allen here was responsible for the fatalities of approximately 269 people, costing $1.57 billion, and hitting Windward Islands, Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico, Haiti, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Mexico, and Southern Texas. Following the storm, Texas, specifically Dallas and Fort Worth, were hit with a heat wave, having certain areas reach temperatures of over 100 degrees for a total of 69 days. About 42 days of that heat was consecutive, and the 1980 United States heat wave was directly caused by Hurricane Allen, which had its name retired in 1981. At number one, Hurricane Patricia. This 2015 storm lasted only four days, from October 20th until the 24th, but it will go down in history as one of the most powerful storms of all time in the Atlantic, if not the most powerful. The highest sustained wind speeds at one point reached 200. 115 miles per hour, which is unheard of, but thankfully the death toll was significantly low when compared to some others on here. A total of eight people died directly, with five more indirectly dying due to the storm, and damages were at 462 million, which again for a hurricane isn't too bad. 
Central America as well as Mexico and Texas were affected the most, but this hurricane was the most storm worldwide in terms of wind speed and second worldwide in regards to pressure behind only 1979's Typhoon Tip. And there you guys have it for the top 10 strongest hurricanes in history. Again, I ranked it by wind speed because it was easy to keep things consistent. We could have looked at wind speed, pressure, depth toll, cost, and so on. But as you can see, some of those variables don't mean strongest as there are numerous factors which can lead to more fatalities or a higher cost, which don't directly correlate to the hurricane strength. Either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And for now, let's reply to some comments from the video, top 10 richest YouTubers revealed. Renix said, what is the most expensive thing on earth? I think it's a good video idea. That actually is not a bad idea at all. I'm actually gonna suggest that and take credit for it. So thank you, I'm kidding. If we do it, I will for sure shout you out, but that actually is a good idea, I feel that the answer to that question changes uh, because you know things change, like value of things change. So I think that's actually a very interesting question. Alejandro Rivera said, Ryan called us poor in so many languages. Yeah, the kid's like, I think he's 10 now or nine. I can't remember off the top of my head, but he's worth like 20 million or 25 million. And that's again, like I said, that's all that we know of. He might have assets, he might have investments that we have no idea about. And it's like this kid, this kid is set for multiple lifetimes. It's crazy. Kyle Stanley said, people like PewDiePie who don't flex their money, everyone else, so here's my Lambo. They, there's like a very famous thing that like people who actually have money don't have to show it off because they know they have it. Whereas the people that you know have to show how much money they have by wearing the designer brands and like the Rolexes and drive the nice cars, they have to, it's like they're so in your face about it because they don't have as much. Which is why people like Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg dress very low key, you know, not flashy at all. And then you have, you know, a lot of celebrities or like YouTubers who wear very flashy designer brands, flashy Rolexes and jewelry and the nice cars because they need to show everybody how rich they are. Because yeah, they have a few million, but they're not billionaires. The billionaires don't wear you know, the fancy, fancy stuff. I mean, some of them do, but not all of them. Anyways, guys, point I'm making is if you have it, you don't gotta flaunt it. But if you gotta flaunt it, I don't know. Anyways, guys, that's all for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein, and we'll see you guys soon.